So we've sent, we being the Biden administration, we have sent billions to Ukraine to protect their borders, even as we have opened our own to the world. Why are we doing this exactly? Well, as Joe Biden has told us repeatedly, doing his Winston Churchill imitation, we're doing it to protect democracy. But of course, the irony here is Ukraine is not a democracy in any recognizable sense. The Ukrainian government has banned media outlets that are hostile to it. They've also shut down opposition parties. They arrested the main opposition leader. That's a democracy. So because we allowed that to happen, in fact, we funded it all, now the Ukrainian government has decided that they can impose censorship in our country. The Ukrainian government has issued a blacklist of so-called Russian propagandists, Americans. That list includes Rand Paul, Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, Tulsi Gabbard, who's serving in the U.S. military, and Glenn Greenwald, among many others. So we thought we'd speak to a couple of them. Starting off tonight, Glenn Greenwald, he's an independent journalist, his work is on Substack, among other places. Glenn, thanks so much for coming on. So you're, you're being blacklisted by the Ukrainian government, which is a beacon of democracy. Tell us how this works. Yeah, I mean, I thought President Zelensky had a word to run. Apparently, he has a lot of time to watch the Morning Joe show on MSNBC, where they sit around for hours accusing everybody they want to discredit of being a Kremlin agent and teaching American liberals how to do the same. You know, it's easy to mock, but it's actually quite outrageous, Tucker. The Ukrainians have a conflict with this neighboring country in Russia. They're totally free to pursue whatever war policies they want. They yes, can fight Russia for the next 10 years if they choose. But that's not what they're doing. They're begging and, in a sense, demanding that other countries countries, including my own, the United States, provide them with a seemingly endless supply of weapons and money, which means we not only have the right, but the obligation to debate that and ask whether that's in the interest of the American people to do. And so for Zelensky to essentially try and export the repression he's imposed in his own country here to the United States by shutting down debate and accusing those of us asking questions of being Kremlin agents or Russian propagandists is takes incredible gall while he's also demanding that we turn over all our money and weapons to him at the same time. This is the guy George W. Bush described as the George Washington of our age. I haven't heard really anybody in Washington say a single word about this. Yeah, I mean, you know, from the beginning, as you know, as, as well as anybody, Tucker, there was a very concerted effort to eliminate all space to ask any questions. Anyone who asked the question of whether we should do more to prevent the war diplomatically, like Tulsi Gabbard, or whether we should risk our own money and our and a potential nuclear exchange with Russia over Ukrainian border disputes, got called a Kremlin agent or a Russian asset. And this is the strategy that they're using to try and prevent us in the United States from exercising our freedom to debate what role our government should play in that war. Exactly. In the name of democracy, they shut it down. Glenn Greenwald, thank you so much for that. Thanks, Tucker. So Tulsi Gabbard is also on this blacklist. She's also someone the Ukrainian government says should be censored. She serves in the U.S. military. She served in the United States Congress. She ran for president. Now she's joining us, and we're happy that she is. Congressman, thank you so much for coming on. What's your reaction Thanks. to finding yourself on this blacklist? I see the hypocrisy, Tucker, the hypocrisy of this blacklist is, and frankly, why the American people should care about this is the Biden-Harris administration and the Washington elite from both parties are continuing to be willing to impoverish the American people and people around the world and push us closer and closer to nuclear war and Holocaust, all to protect democracy and defeat autocracy in Ukraine. And all of this is happening as uh, the Ukrainian president is frankly exposing that there is no democracy in Ukraine. You mentioned a few examples of some of the things that he's doing in silencing any dissenting voices, imprisoning political opponents, banning all political activity from the 11 opposition parties, uh, frankly, taking control of all national media under his unified information policy. And now he's turning his sights on Americans, not only uh, myself and others you've mentioned, but a sitting U.S. senator. Uh, the, the danger of this, again, uh, goes to the cost that our leaders are willing to exact as they continue this facade of a, of a push for so-called democracy and defeat autocracy. The whole thing is so hypocritical, and we need to hold our leaders accountable for it. I couldn't agree more. I have to ask you, since you served in Washington uh, for years, I know you were not generally aligned with Steve Bannon, or at least in the public mind, but you watched him get convicted last week of contempt of Congress for not cooperating with the January 6th committee, while many others, Eric Holder, Lois Lerner, 
have not been put on trial for ignoring subpoenas from the Congress. What's your reaction to this? It shows the double standard in Washington, but more dangerously, it shows how this administration is so willingly weaponizing our Department of Justice to act as their own personal political hit squad and going after political opponents and turning a blind eye to people on their own team. This is incredibly dangerous because when you look at what's at the heart of our democracy, it is the rule of law. It is our ability as Americans to be able to trust that these public institutions are serving the public interest and not favoring whoever's in power versus who's not in power. That no matter our political affiliation, how we use our free speech, the color of our skin, how we worship, none of these things should matter because we should have faith that our justice system will treat us equally and fairly across the board. This weaponization of the Department of Justice is incredibly dangerous and sets a dangerous precedent that, that undermines this very foundation of our democracy. You served in the Congress as a Democrat. When the Washington Post started attacking you, I started paying very close attention to what you were saying. Why, why do they dislike us? Because you're a person of principle. That's why. And they hate that. I appreciate your coming on tonight. Tulsi Gabbard, as always. Thank you. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens. Stories that are changing the world and changing your life. From Tucker Carlson tonight.